conversation. Um, the format's quite simple. We try to keep it quite short every week or bi-weekly, actually, at the moment. We're inviting a guest on who's um, linked with the circular economy, maybe in their business, um, to, to talk about their role and what's inspired them as well. This week, uh, we're excited to have Ellis. I, I was going to check out to say her second name. I'm very sorry if I say it wrong. Ellis Jodalova. You'll, you'll be able to tell me if it's right. Good, good. Um, who works actually with Olio, but actually has a lot of circular economy um, experience, is passionate about the subject, and has done a lot of work around uh, building uh, communities using entrepreneurial skills, with a volunteer kind of engagement as well. So we're going to hope to hear quite a lot around that. Um, Sophie will be chatting with her for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. You can use the chat um, facilities to pop in your LinkedIn profiles if you want to kind of connect with others who've joined us as well. And as well as that, maybe log any questions uh, that you might have that we'll leave in some time at the end to kind of come back to some of those questions if they've not already been covered as well. So without further ado, I'll pass over to Sophie. Thank you, Erika. Hey, everyone. Thank you, Elise, for joining us. We're really, really excited to have you. And those are interesting, like very interesting conversation um, starting. Um, every week, we actually ask our guests to come with a conversation starter, as we said. Um, so Elise, we were wondering if you could show us what you brought us today, please. Um, it's either very interesting or very weird one. But as a topic, I brought this, which actually uh, is a homemade jam from my mum. Um, and that's the thing we do every summer since I was a child. Uh, so mum is the florist and father is sort of horticulturist by trade. So I've been always very close and around food since I was a kid. We got a garden, not a farm at all, but kind of uh, fruit trees, uh, you know, berry bushes, uh, veggies, all uh, things you can think of. And um, we always make things out of surplus. We eat seasonally as much as we can. This one, I think, is a strawberry one, and I think 2018. So you can see how strawberry, which would have been binned that summer, uh, is still in this jar, and I can't wait to actually uh, try it um, tomorrow morning. And another uh, thing I realized that also the very circular bit of this object is the glass jar, because this one, uh, come from the Czech Republic, is the brand uh, which makes uh, baby purees, uh, like uh, fruit purees for children. And every person, family or mother who makes jams and pickles, they always keep these and reuse them. So I would think this one is probably a decade or older and always gets jam in every summer, washed up, put in back in a pantry and as it goes. So yeah, that's a food surplus and circular kind of a glass jar in one perhaps. It's so angry, now we need a scone or something like that to put your lovely jam on it. <laughs> <laughs> So clearly you've been, I mean, the, the sort of the, the food waste aspect and reusing and so on has been in your family for quite a while, it sounds like. Yeah, I think that's how I sort of got to food waste where I moved to um, UK and now I live in Jersey because the, the connection to food is a bit different, how it's sold is different, how we treat it and also of course, it depends. People may, some places, they don't have such gardens and places to grow food. So maybe they're not as close to it. So do you think that being close to the food is something that is important in that aspect? Yeah, I do. I do feel that. If you, you must have heard uh, or Jimmy Oliver and other kind of documentaries, they talk about how children, sometimes they don't know what pork is, you know, how um, cherry tomato looks like. Bless my partner's little one who is 11. We were growing cherry tomatoes and he goes to the garden and, oh, I love this strawberry, Alice. I'm like, honey, it's cherry tomato. So yeah, they just see it in a, you know, in a pot and in a little plastic container in a, in a supermarket coming home. And maybe they don't realize at all how it sort of works. Mm -hmm. no, that's very interesting. So to really kickstart the conversation, um, because here we talk a lot about the circular economy, I was wondering uh, if you could tell us a little bit more how you see the food waste aspect link to the circular economy. There is a huge link and as you know food 
and food waste is a big part of the global problem of climate change and many others. It's connected to so many things that um, people used to laugh at me when I was a kid. You can't change the world. You want to fix this, fix that. And I love food. And as I told you, it was around my family. And then I looked into it a bit more when I was studying at Union London and realized that actually focusing on food waste you know, might help with deforestation and, you know, we'll discuss about it. It's connected, probably like many others, but I feel specifically food and food waste to humongous other issues, humongous amount of others. Um, so, as you know, or you might not know, circular economy is about designing out waste, preferably from the start, but um, often with many linear economies or pro products or items. There will always be some waste in the, during the part of the process of making it or producing it, which isn't necessarily wrong. That's natural, as even in the nature, you know, there's things, you know, falling of the trees, which are potentially waste, but they come back to the whole uh, biological system. So the main thing and focus of um, food, food waste and circular economy is really trying to look at, first of all, how can we avoid food waste from the start of the supply chain to the end and when the food waste occurs how can we use it in its highest value so uh, you know of course we, I could, we could put these buckets of raspberries and strawberries but mum to the compost which we couldn't consume but that's really not the same value to me clearly as having it tomorrow for breakfast so trying to look at where is the highest value and redistribute it to people first. And then of course the hierarchy goes down to um, animals if it's suitable, anaerobic digestion, energy recovery, composting, and in the worst case scenario, landfill. But I think with food waste, food you know, should go back to biocycle. So landfill is a no from me at least. Really interesting. I like how you link it to the value aspects. It's like there's some that some other things that we could do, but it might not be the, the first choice in that aspect. So that links quite nicely, actually, to the audio app and, uh, and what you're doing there. Something that we were quite interested in is, is the work that there is around food waste, but also the community engagement and how can basically the two really bring the people together. I was That's a really uh, lovely part of uh, my journey with Olio and about food waste is that, uh, I mean, we all love and need food and food waste is environmental, economic, as well as social tragedy. Uh, so at the same time, we waste, we're wasting over a third or some stats say even 40% of food we produce. And at the same time, there is millions and millions of people going hungry. So really doesn't make sense to start with. Um, and uh, Olio, if you haven't heard before, it's an app and platform that uh, connects neighbors with each other to share food and also non-food items to avoid waste. And also our Food Waste Zero program connects uh, uh, people, volunteers with uh, stores and shops and supermarkets um, who got surplus food. They collect it and redistribute it again via the Olio app to the community. So I don't even want to go there, but uh, you all know the hidden poverty, uh, children without without meals and breakfast and um, charities struggling, especially during COVID, the linear supply chain clearly was put into front of our eyes that it's problematic. It's not perfect. And um, at the start, we've had so much food, more food coming to us. Um, at the same time, charities had more people coming to them. Lots of people lost jobs and needed more help. So it's it's a huge circle, which definitely um, needs looking at. Um, so what I, I I live in Jersey, if I haven't mentioned it yet, and I started as a volunteer myself. I didn't like what's going on about uh, surplus food in UK, where I lived there for many years and even here. So I was shopping in the evening, seeing all the reduced items, piles, and start to chat to the um, stores. What are you going to do with this? Like, which charity is going to take it? Are you guys taking it home as a staff? And they were all like, didn't want to say much, but 
shaking head that no, it's just going to the bin. I couldn't believe it, especially uh, seasonality in the Western world is a little bit lost. So pineapples, bananas, all these amazing exotic um, products coming from so far, where it's still a little bit green, but there were dates on them saying it's only good till today and they were going to be bins. So I really disliked that thought and uh, tried to look into ways how to make uh, the nice edible food to be eaten. And I bumped into Olio one day online and I thought it was magic. It just brings it all together, what I was trying to solve. And yeah, I did start uh, now three and a half years ago here. And in a month's time, it was on TV and newspapers. And I had people who collected from me, offering me help to volunteer. And the community empowerment and engagement was just shining and still is. And I think that's one of the nicest parts of of the story. People did it for themselves. Government didn't really have anything about food waste in their agendas at the time. Still doesn't very much, but it's changing, hopefully. And yeah, people just disliked what they saw. They were shocked by the photos I was posting online, like, look, I've just collected this. Who wants that? And um, yeah, so helping people, those who are, uh, there's just going back, there's sort of a dignity about, you know, trying to ask for help, not about food, but anything else. We all know it, you know, if we have a problem, it's hard to come um, and ask for help. Um, and especially small places, I don't think it's only Jersey, which is a small island, but smaller villages, small towns, everybody sort of gets knows others. And now over social media, you worry that it will go somewhere that you needed help and you're struggling or something, you don't wanna uh, look this and that way. So the fact that Oleo is completely, um, totally anonymous, we're not asking anybody's circumstances and income. We've had such heartwarming uh, messages. I've had messages from mothers who were struggling short term and they didn't know what they're going to eat next week. And, you know, we all been in some short term or long term sort of struggle. Um, so yeah, it's definitely have a huge uh, social side and community kind of a togetherness about sharing food within each other. Well, thank you for that. It really it warms my heart when you hear <laughs> that. <laughs> it really shows it doesn't have to be complicated. Just do what feels That's true. Nice. It's not as complicated. It uh, yeah, really yeah. isn't. Yeah. I was wondering because uh, as we talk about the app, you said that you've got you know um, some more stats or so on around reading, and I was wondering if you could share some of that aspects with us, and also if you've got any recommendation to really get started. You know, it's like we're I don't know twenty of us here, so uh, what would be the first thing that we could do to get started on that journey? So yes, I did look in our little uh, data page, uh, and reading is buzzing. Uh, you might not think, but there's over 10,000 people who got the Oleo app on their phones. So that's fascinating. Brilliant start. So when I was starting, there were none in Jersey. So it was a you know clean slate. So you guys got a brilliant um, start. And over 120 uh, registered uh, Food Waste Zeros volunteers. And we got at least five or six uh, stores that we regularly, daily collect uh, surplus food from. Pret uh, is one, and uh, Tesco, uh, to name a few. Uh, you might have seen recently on LinkedIn or even online or um, in the media that we've been incredibly um, lucky and happy that we started our great partnership with Tesco. So probably every city now, if not yet, anytime soon, uh, we will be collecting surplus food from Tesco stores. And just on that note, we always fill in the gaps. We never take anything away from charity. It's in a hierarchy of reducing food waste. Stores, of course, should look at what they sell, what's not going or the less, then sell at reduced price, then redistribute to charities, and then potentially it would be Oleo. So we kind of at, at that level. Um, so yeah, you please, if you want to, if you don't have the app, get on it. You must have things in your house, food or non-food sometimes, seasonal or party times that you don't want anymore and would like to share them easily. Um, or you can volunteer or others, you know, might want to volunteer um, to collect from stores. There's always opportunities to sign up more stores uh, because there's only as much 
our small team can do. So now, you know, uh, UK is very busy with Tesco, but there's all the other cafes that probably might have um, surplus and could, would join us. So we could definitely start collecting from more stores. Um, and that's the, probably the main side of things. And one more, I almost forgot because it's a very new. So in this month in October, Oleo added a new feature, which is called Mate, uh, based on, um, you know, we're all at home and uh, trying to, you know, when during lockdowns, people were trying to take different hobbies and uh, find ways to make new incomes and crafts became a kind of a big thing. And making food, people are really, they had better connection uh, to food and that some statistics say that uh, so many more people now wasting less food because when we were at home and couldn't go shopping every day and cooked ourselves, you know, again, the connection I mentioned at the start increased, which I was really happy to see. So the mate feature on the app uh, lets um, users to sell their own homemade um, either food products like cakes, jams, and Christmas chocolates, uh, or crafts, you know, knitting and paintings and all sorts of things. So already buzzing with beautiful things. So really support the neighborhood connections and homemade uh, kind of things. Um, so yeah, that's fantastic. That's how really you exciting. can join us. Yeah, very Especially exciting. With Christmas time. coming up now, it's like, it feels like this is going to be one of the go plays too. <laughs> yeah, I've just ordered actually cupcakes for the 18th birthday over Oleo Mate. So locally made by um, uh, just lady in another parish. So I'm looking forward to test it myself for the first time live with those lovely things. So do you see, I'm just wondering, as you're saying that, so do you see like someone's waste can be taken, made into something else and resold through the same platform? So it's really becoming sort of more... We thought that that might actually happen. And uh, I know we've done it uh, when I was volunteering or even, you know, now when sometimes we collected Jersey got extra little uh, interesting point because when I land, if there is a bad weather or something happens with the boat, we have a very big delay in the imported food coming to us. So sometimes we had a call from local supermarket, Ellis, bring more cars because there was a delay in boats and the dates now kind of running out. So we will never sell this uh, amount of bananas, let's say, in one day. So please take your volunteers and take all you can. So we've had like piles and boxes of bananas. So we all started to make, we, given what we had to go, get, um, had to give, and then some things were left or people themselves started to make banana bread and sharing it with others. And yeah, it's really great to see how, how far then mm -hmm. the surplus can go. No, it's fantastic. Right, so I've got a lot more I can ask Elise, but I'm conscious that a number of you might have some questions. So Erika, I don't know if there was anything in the chat or if any of you have got a question for Elise, unmute yourself and ask her. <laughs> there weren't any specific questions in the chat, but there are quite a lot of Olio users already. Um, right. And Nigel's already just downloaded it now as we speak oh, <laughs> and thinks it's great. <laughs> so you've, you've got a new new adopter there as well. But yeah, if anyone's got any other questions There's from There's so Alice. much we could dive into, you know, uh, food touches on every part of our lives. And yeah, food waste is really a tragedy and we're all guilty here and there. But beyond this, what we do, I think the freezers should become best friends, better friends of all of us, because uh, you can really freeze about like 95% of things. I go a little crazy. I test uh, probably more than anybody would, but yeah, it tends to work out always really well. And it's great when you realize, oh, I haven't been shopping and it's raining. Oh my God, so much in my freezer. But um, yeah, it's a really good help. I'm a little squirrel at the moment. I feel like that and just stuffing my with all this. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I've seen that Jillian just unmuted herself, so she probably has a question. I think Nigel was showing his head up as well. Okay. Please. Jillian, you want to start? Yeah, just I'm interested about this sharing um, food because I bake a lot. So I'm interested oh. in this sort of additional element of being able to share because obviously there's always that question about homemade food and whether you can all of the you know health and safety right. around it so I'm interested in in how that's working with Olio and, and is that being expanded across everywhere or is it piloted yeah. in different places no um the mate section if you think about the selling then that's 
across, I mean, all features are across the, the app. Uh, on that note, you reminded me that if people are selling food, we are asking, there is a tick box to say that they've been registered sort of like, a, you know, with a food and hygiene a local authority. So to give uh, the users this extra peace of mind. Um, so yeah, that's there. But for the crafts and non-food items, there isn't any anything really like that. Thank you. Uh, so we got Robert, uh, Nigel, and Robert. Nigel. Yeah, it wasn't really a question. It was more an observation. Um, and in fact, it, it might particularly apply to someone like Jersey. But when you go on holiday and perhaps take a, a rented home or something like that, and then at the end of your time, week or two weeks, you have to clear out all those, you know, you try to buy the smallest washing up liquid and, you know, all the other little things that you, you need. And then you have to clear them all out. Or, um, and, you know, it really galls, doesn't it? That you either take them home and you've got all these, uh, these things, or if you can't take them home, I don't know, you're flying or something, if anybody still does that, I don't think anybody does. Um, <laughs> then, um, you know, uh, just to be able to do something with them would be, would be great. Or, or, Brilliant uh, point. Yeah, because or, on that note, we have had a collaboration with Airbnb. So, you Wonderful. know, they, yeah. they have supported what we're doing and it was on their channels, which makes humongous sense. I was traveling also helped to establish a uh, sharing uh, community in Stockholm. And so every time I was staying somewhere, I was doing the same day before. Oh, I have this and that. And yeah, it always got used up, which was great. I suppose you could do it the other way. You, you, you arrive somewhere and you immediately look for who's got, you know, wash up liquid available or <laughs> Good try, yeah. <laughs> it shows like it goes both ways now, so it's really, really good point. Right. Yes, and now there is also another little feature that there is a search button. So in a busy places and cities in London, you actually can search washing up liquid potentially because there's lots and lots of things to scroll through. All right, they can really clean up. Yep. We're going to have to explore <laughs> yeah, much more to find out all about that. <laughs> Go on, Robert. Um, yeah, it's, it's just what you refer to it about sort of the anonymity of it, because there obviously is going to be um, people feel a sort of stigma. They can't afford things and they're going to have to go and get the, um, the food, you know, that no one else wants, really. And I think that's, as you say, we, you know, if you're confident, you want to go, and, you know, we we'll make use of it. But there are possibly the people who need it most do that, you know, getting access to it and getting access to them, as it were, and alerting them to it, because they may not have any credit on their phone. You know, we can all download the app and all the rest of it. So I don't know what your experience in Jersey about actually reaching out to those who mm -hmm. probably need it the most in, in that sense. We always try to make sure it, the food goes to those who need it. And sometimes or quite often people do decide to share a little bit, or you can sense from their message, uh, Oh, they say, oh, this would be amazing because I have seven children, it happens. And then you immediately, you know, understand that you look out for that person again. We also work and support all charities. So uh, when we have, I ask them, when you need something specific, when you do events, let us know. Uh, so some charities don't have residents as such but they connect with them. So they talk to them about Oleo, they send them our way. People recommend or tell me names. Again, it's only name. Look at Lucy with chili pepper icon. I don't know anything about her, but I no. know without anybody saying that she is definitely needing it more. We supported breakfast club. So again, getting to teachers and children, you know, supporting with breakfast again their parents wouldn't probably use the app so there's all we tried all sorts of loops and it always sort of we get there at, at some point nice. and there is a platform online so even if a person doesn't own a smartphone they can use it on any computer any laptop library potentially Thank you for all of that. Right, I'm conscious that we are getting to the end of the session already. <laughs> um, Elise, I was wondering, just before we finish, we always ask our guests if they would recommend someone to come and join our conversation in the future. So I was wondering if you've got someone that you would recommend to us. Interesting, because I'm not locally based, 
so it can only be uh, somebody a little further afield. Um, I am, I've been involved more and more within the circular economy beyond food waste myself. And I'm been now second time, I'm a part of the Ellen MacArthur little program, Linear from Circular. And there are so many brilliant speakers on all topics. So if you get a chance or know someone or LinkedIn someone from Ellen MacArthur Foundation, I think that would be a brilliant guest. Fantastic. Thank you. I think we do have someone that we know locally. So and oh, even yeah, better. Good initiative for <laughs> Ellen MacArthur. So we're probably going to reach out to him. <laughs> Very Great. Good. I will definitely log into that session then. <laughs> I will let you know when that is. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say a very, very big thank you. I think it was very inspiring and seeing the number of people that turn up and sign up as well. Uh, clearly, it is something that is close to everyone's heart and the job and what the app can do is, uh, is fantastic. <laughs> Simply as simple as that. Um, so I wanted to say a very big thank you again, Elise, and to everyone else who joined us. And just a little um, heads up for in two weeks' time. Um, so we're going to have a bit of... Um, a special week, if I can say, because we're joining hands with the Climate Festival, um, which supports the launch um, of the Climate Emergency Strategy. And we're going to have throughout the week what we call a Circular at Home Challenge. So every day we're going to cover a different topic uh, and we're going to give everyone like little challenges. And on the Friday, we're going to have a special um, Circular Coffee Conversation with Ehab from Biome where they're really uh, looking at well, re-innovating, innovating and disrupting like the, well, the future of home, basically. I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> and and he makes um, insulation from growing mushrooms as well. Yes. <laughs> so he's a very, I mean, he's a very inspiring speaker and they're really rethinking so much. So we're going to have a special um, um, one on Friday, not Thursday that week to fit in with um, the climate festival as well. Details. Yeah. There's one thing to, to highlight on that. Um, if you either sign up on the Reading Live event or we'll also put the link in our um, material, it's all free, um, but we are putting donations toward New Beginnings Reading, uh, which is a homeless and poverty, um, anti poverty charity um, in a um, reused old pub. They have a community fridge, they host the Reading Bike Kitchen. Uh, so we thought that was a relevant charity to direct any donations uh, to, from the events and stuff towards as well. So yeah, just to let you know, that will be what any donations do go towards. Yeah. It's a little, yeah. So that was a bit of a special week, something that we can all celebrate what we're all doing locally as well. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining and see you hopefully in two weeks time. <laughs>